I'd like to start this video with sincere apologies to any Welsh language specialists that might be watching. This is a record of two springtime sessions in Llanristed in Cardigan Bay. I was led to believe that this is a low water venue with a chance of catching small eyed rays. However, I was told it's a bit early in the year for them, but I'm likely to catch whiting and there's still a chance of codling which had been about. I didn't really want to catch whiting, so with that in mind, I set up one rig for big fish, the whole medium sized squid, and one with sand eel and ragworm, hoping that I might catch an early ray. And that's a promising start, with a bite straight away on the squid. The fish felt of reasonable size, however, it came off on the way in. Now thinking I should have penalled the rig, since the squid had moved down over the bend of a hook and masked the point. I probably struck too early and a hook didn't get hold in the fish's mouth. Still, I'm happy that I got a bite straight away on the first cast since I'm fishing the tide down and was expecting them to be over low water. As you can see, I'm using an up and over rig with a squid bait with a size 2.0 hook. My excuse for not starting with a panel rig is that I find a single hook kinder to raise should they swallow the bait deeply. There is a chance of catching them on squid, but I find that small eyes tend to prefer sand eel, and the fish that I've just lost didn't feel like a ray. As usual, I'm using Google Earth to pinpoint the location of a mark that I'm fishing. The following videos in this series will look at the venues within the regional setting. Here I've just zoomed straight in on the location that I'm fishing. The village is on the main coastal road. Two turn-offs almost opposite the Texaco garage take you to the beaches. I'm fishing the cleaner ground on the south beach where there's a conveniently located car park. This is south of the caravan parks and there's plenty of room for anglers. For those interested, I've pinpointed the precise mark that I fished. This is a shallow water sandy venue so it helps to wade out when casting. Although I don't know this venue, in general I find codling and rays to be at distance so I'm generally casting a fair way but I will try closer in at times. I've set up on the wet sand and will be moving my gear down with the tide. I'm intending to fish right the way down and up until the water hits the shingle beach behind me. Even though it's the start of the Easter holidays, I'm surprised that there's hardly anyone around and no one else fishing. It didn't take long for the next bite, and thankfully I'm in this time, and hopefully it's properly hooked. Well, it's better than a whiting, but only a dogfish. There are bull husks to be had here, and I would have preferred one of those. However, I'll make do with this. And I'm not complaining, since at a lot of venues I've fished, big baits can be totally ignored. So it's nice to have had two bites on squid very early on. Time to move down with the tide. My rig on my second rod is a free snud loop rig.
Before I recast, let's have the obligatory pan round and look at the gear. To my left, the ground is more broken and rough, similar to the beaches to the north. Here, there's a sharp divide between the shingle and the sand that's exposed at low tide. The people standing on top of the shingle are in front of a car park. You can just about make out more of a caravan park in the distance with a rough ground in front. I'm using my standard gear, which is perhaps not suitable for this wet sand. My continental rod seems spot on, but lighter versions could have been used under these conditions, and I didn't really need the lead with wires since there didn't appear to be any tidal pull. My free hook rig has a sprat squid cocktail on the bottom of the snood, a sand eel in the middle, and rag worm on top. Here I'm hedging my bets by fishing the three different baits. Because the rig is clipped down, it's also good for casting at range. The baits on the bottom two snoods are specifically targeting rays, whereas the ragworm on the top is a catch-anything bait. With stronger onshore winds, I'd imagine there'd be a good chance of catching bass here. In those conditions, I'd be looking to cast a lot shorter. In case anyone was wondering, I do have waders on underneath my over trousers, and if I was a bit more prepared, I would have probably come with chest waders. I'm tightening up to my legs to put a slight bend in my tips in order to get a slight better bite indication. I still like to do this even though I'm using braid which hasn't got any stretch. You can spot bites which you might otherwise not see if you're using mono. And there's a bite which is quite a good sharp pull. It's on the free hook rig this time and I've connected. It's my second dogfish which has fallen to the bait on the middle snood. I had swapped that over to ragworm. This one's a bit lively, so the traditional way of unhooking it by putting its tail to its head and then yanking on the hook didn't seem to work. 
so I had to go and get my pliers out to remove that hook. Before recasting, I spot another bite on a rig with whole squid. I strike, but don't connect. I don't put it in, but wait just in case the fish wants to have another go. Miss bite now on a rig with three hooks. Time to put the sand deal back on the middle hook. And no, my foot wasn't aimed at the dog, it was strategically placed to stop it from picking up the bait on my top snood. I placed a strip of squid with the sand deal and I'm now whipping it in place. I'm still keeping an eye on my other rod since I've started to get little taps. Put in that rig with a squid and find a fish on. I didn't really feel it on, but nevertheless it's there, and it's a whiting. It had whittled the squid down and swallowed what's remaining. 
low tide now and things have gone quiet, so it's time to try something different. I've baited up a short wire boom rig with just ragworm, so I'm going to try that closer in. I'm not really expecting any flat fish, but you never know. get a long spell without bites and the tide is now coming in. I'm now having to make my first move back towards the shingle. Despite the sunny conditions, the sand here is still wet and hasn't dried out. I think I would have been better off with just a normal plastic seat box rather than the gear that I'm carrying. The material on these three items aren't 100% waterproof and I'm also not that keen on a wet sand getting stuck to them. The boom rig didn't work, so I'm back to using the free snud loop rig. Still no bites on the incoming tide and now I've got to retreat back to the shingle.
calling this shingle, but as you can see, in places it's more like boulders. I should have taken a bit more care positioning my tripod and fixing it in place. Because it's gone very quiet, I start preparing another up and over rig, this time penalled and to fish double sand eel. That's with bull huss in mind, as well as rays. I'm distracted and my eyes taken away from the rods and disaster strikes. Whilst not looking, something had pulled a rod over, taking the tripod with it. I feel a fish on, but I've got a faff about before I can bring it in. I could have cut this bit out of a video since it's a bit undignified but I do like to keep it real. Sometimes you get a take when you least expect it and this is one of those occasions. I need to rescue one of my rods while I've got a fish on the other. Wind down and fortunately the fish is still on and it feels quite reasonable. This feels different to the other fish I've had. The fish is trying to hug the bottom, but I bring it up to the surface. The fish goes back down again, closer to the water's edge, and tries to hug the bottom. I'm delighted that one of my targets has been achieved since the fish is a ray. As expected, it is a small eyed ray, not huge, but nevertheless most welcome. I'm sure there'd be more of these around as we head towards summer.
Well, that finished off a pretty enjoyable session. I gave it another half an hour without any more bites and decided to go and fish elsewhere. Even though the first session wasn't all that prolific, I couldn't wait to come back and to fish it over high water. Different rigs this time, with sand eeled and squid on the rig that I prepared when the rod fell over. Here's a close up of that baked cocktail, and I've got squid on the pulley panel rig. I've set up on the sand that I've started as the tide is still coming in. The rest of my gear is amongst the boulders. I'm expecting to have to retreat quite quickly, as the day before the tide came in pretty sharpish. Conditions were a bit rougher this evening, but still very fishable. I was here to make sure I was fishing the same time of tide as when I caught the raid the day before. However, I'd be staying on to see if I could catch later on in the tide. There's no sign of any activity at this stage. I make an early decision to replace the pulley rig with a free snud loop rig.
tide's now coming very quickly and I'm thinking about moving onto the shingle. Water's already reached the boulders now, and this is the time I caught that ray. Despite being very hopeful, the bite never came. I'm now having to move up the beach. It's my first real sign of any weed at this venue.
I was hoping for a boat on the sand hill on this up and over rig, but that hasn't come yet. I'm now thinking that perhaps I should have fished this mark over low water again. After quite a wait, I get my first bite and I've got a fish on. Well, it's only whiting, but at least I haven't blanked.
Things are looking up. I'm getting the odd bite now. I strike into something which feels a bit better than a whiting. Unfortunately, as I pull it in close, the fish comes off. It looked like a dogfish. Immediately afterwards, I lose another one, so it's just not my day. I did get one more whiting before pecking up, but I also lost another half-decent fish. Not what I was hoping for, but this venue's definitely got potential, and I will be coming back. I'd probably just want to fish it over low water, with sand eel on loop rigs.